In today's video, I'm going to go over an explanation of what is a velocity selector. We're going to have a little bit of a description, an explanation, and we'll also do a couple short example problems. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I notice that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. I make a big effort to make videos for you. Please subscribe. Support my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And don't forget to share this video. Okay, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website, where they're looking for notes, practice problems, some online simulations that you can do. You can find all that at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And of course, I made a bunch of other videos for this topic. Link to those is in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, what is a velocity selector, sometimes called a velocity filter, and sometimes called a beans filter? Well, a velocity selector uses uh, is used as a velocity filter for charged particles to select them based on their speed or their velocity. For example, they use in electron microscopes and spectrometers and also in mass spectrometry. And we have up here a diagram, a schematic of a mass spectrometer, and it consists of an ion source, the velocity selector, and then a second magnetic field. And this ion source is going to be emitting charged particles, ions, but it's going to be emitting them with a known charge, but with a bunch of different velocities, with a wide range of velocities. And we want only the charged particles that pass through here with the velocity that we select with our velocity selector. The velocity selector consists of an electric field and a magnetic field. Some of the particles are going to make it through. Some are going to be filtered out. Others will be filtered out. And the ones that make it through will know their velocity. I'm going to show you how to calculate their velocity. And then they will reach the second magnetic field and then be split into two distinct beams based on their mass. One will end up here, one will end up here. We will know the velocity of the charged particles, we'll know their charge, we'll know the strength for the second magnetic field. We can measure the radius of the path to P1 and to P2, and therefore we can use that information to calculate the mass of those charged particles. Okay? Now, let's talk about how we develop and build up our velocity selector. We're going to start with two charged particles, two charged plates. We have a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate. Therefore, when we have two charged plates like that, we're going to have an electric field, and the electric field travels from the positive plate to the negative plate. Here's the charged particles from our ion source. They have a positive charge in this case. They have a bunch of different velocities because it's going to be a whole stream of charged particles. But all of them, when they enter that electric field, they're going to be deflected, accelerated downwards on that parabolic path because those particles, when they travel through that electric field, are only going to have one force acting on them, and that force is known as the electric force. Well, we want some of the particles with just the right velocity that we select to travel straight through and, and make it to this slit right here. Well, we don't want them to come down here. We want them to travel straight through. So that means we have to add something. We have to add something that's going to give them a force in the upward direction. That force is going to be the Lorentz force because we are going to add a magnetic field so that when those particles travel through the velocity selector, the electric force will be equal to the Lorentz force and those particles will travel straight through. Now, what is going to be the orientation of the magnetic field so that the force from the magnetic field, the Lorentz force, will be oriented and pointing in the upward direction? Okay, we want the charged particles to feel a force in the upward direction. Well, to figure out the direction of the magnetic field, we're going to use our right hand rule. This is my right hand. The thumb, if you remember, for the right hand points in the direction that the charged particles are moving. Your palm is the force. This, in this case, the force is going to be up. Your fingers represent the magnetic field, and the magnetic field can be pointed into the page. So in order to get an upward force from the magnetic field, we are going to have to orient the magnetic field so it points into the page just like that. And therefore, if we have just the right velocities, then those charged particles will travel straight through that slit, and that's what we want to know. And we can calculate their velocity, the velocity of the particles that make it through. 
because we know in that case when they travel straight through that the electric force is going to be equal to the Lorentz force. And we know when we calculate those two forces that QE, the charge times the electric field strength, is how we calculate the electric force. The Lorentz force is calculated as the charge times the velocity of the particles times the magnetic field strength. Well, you can see we have a Q on both sides, and that's the same Q as the charge of this particle. Therefore, that cancels, and we're simply left with E, the electric field strength, is equal to V, the velocity, times the magnetic field strength. But we want to know what is the velocity, so we're going to solve this equation for the velocity, and the velocity of those charged particles is simply going to be the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength. So this is the equation that we can use to calculate the velocity of the charged particles that make it straight through that velocity filter or velocity selector. And we're going to do a simple problem like that at the end of the video. Now, we said earlier, which I think is very interesting, is some of the particles are going to be filtered out because they have the wrong velocity. So I'm going to talk about why the particles are filtered out. So some particles, we said, travel straight through. Some particles travel up and are filtered out, and some particles are filtered out because they are deflected in the downward direction. So we have three different positions, one, two, and three, and we want to talk about why the particles reach position number one, why they reach position number two, and why they reach position number three. Well, for position number one, we really talked about that already. We talked about that, and we said that it is because the electric force is equal to the Lorentz force. When those particles travel straight through, the Lorentz force acts up, the electric force acts downwards, and those particles travel straight through because those two forces are equal to each other, and the velocity of those particles is simply E divided by B. Now, what about the particles that end up and are filtered out and end up here at position number two? Well, why were they deflected upwards? Well, if you look at our two equations here, you'll notice that Q, the electric force is calculated as QE, and the Lorentz force is calculated as QVB. Okay, well, those particles ended up here at position number two because the Lorentz force was greater than the electric force. Well, why was the Lorentz force greater than the electric force? It's because those particles were traveling too fast. The Lorentz force is the only force of the two that is affected by the velocity. If you have a too high of a velocity, if the velocity is too high, then the Lorentz force is going to be greater than the electric force, and the particles will end up here at position number two. And they do that because their velocity is too high. Well, the opposite is obviously true then for position number three. In position number three, the electric force is greater than the Lorentz force or the Lorentz force is less than the electric force. Well, why is the Lorentz force less than the electric force? Well, the Lorentz force is the only force, again, that's affected by the velocity. Therefore, those particles are deflected downwards and reach position number three here because they didn't have enough velocity. Their velocity was too low. So at position number one, the forces are equal. The velocity is E divided by B. At position number two, the Lorentz force is greater than the electric force because the velocity is too high. At position number three, the Lorentz force is less than the electric force because the velocity is too low. All right, now we can go on and do a couple of simple example problems here. The first one says that we have a velocity selector. We have an electric field strength of 2.0, okay, 2.0 times 10 to the third volts per meter. We have a magnetic field strength of 50 milliteslas, and we want to know what is going to be the velocity of those particles that make it straight through that velocity selector. Not the ones where they have too much velocity, not the ones that don't have enough velocity, but what is the velocity going to be? Now, we started out by saying the two forces are equal. That's why they travel straight through. And we said the velocity is equal to the electric field strength divided by the magnetic field strength. Well, we know the electric field strength. We know the magnetic field strength. The electric field strength is 2.0 times 10 to the third volt per meter. The magnetic field strength is 50 milliteslas, so we have to put 10 to the minus 3 here for milliteslas. And we find out that the velocity of those charged particles 
that will have an equal forces acting on them and that will make it straight through is 40,000 meters per second, which we can write as 4.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second, okay? I teach in Germany at this time and we use commas here, so I put a comma here, but this should really be 4.0 and this should of course be 2.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. Okay, let's do one more problem here. We have a similar problem, but in this case, we don't know the magnetic field strength. We know the electric field strength is 1.25 times 10 to the seventh volts per meter. We know the velocity of those particles that travel straight through is 5.0 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. And what therefore must the magnetic field strength be? Well, we have the same equation. We're just gonna solve for the magnetic field strength, which is the electric field strength divided by the velocity, and we get 1.25 times 10 to 7 volt meters divided by 5.0 times 10 to 7 meters per second, and we simply get that the velocity, excuse me, that the magnetic field strength is 0 0.25 tesla. Okay, there you go. We did a bunch of stuff in that video. We went over a definition, a description, how the velocity selector works, why some particles are filtered out, and why some particles are not filtered out. And then we did two nice, simple example problems. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. It's actually five things now. Subscribe to my channel. Click the notifications bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, please. I appreciate all the comments. I try to respond to every comment. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. But don't forget, please subscribe. Support my channel step by step science.